Time now to chat with an Irish football sensation who is well and truly at the top of his game, Finula. Yes, during his time so far playing between Ireland and Everton, he's racked up over 400 caps. No biggie there, Brian, much more than myself or yourself. Yes. And has been hailed as a living legend. Well, please welcome that living legend, Seamus Coleman. Hey, Seamus, how are you? Hi, guys, how are you? I'm all good, how are you? Welcome to the Six O'Clock Show. And I think you just told us before we start our chat, you're actually back training you're coming to us live from the training ground i am indeed yeah i'm at the training ground i've got three noisy kids at home so i thought it's safer to stay at work and do it on here rather than go home and anyone could interrupt me at any time I and you have two noisy kids here yeah. as well going to ask you loads <laughs> of questions it's perfect right smart thinking smart thinking uh, you're obviously back training which is great to see uh, because you are just coming back from injury how are you doing now yeah, I'm good. I'm better now, thank you. Um, had a tough end last season, obviously. I had a few little niggles and we were in a very tough season, so I couldn't um, afford any time to rest. So uh, just over the summer, I had uh, some work done and back fit now and, and ready to go for another year and really looking forward to it. I'm laughing when he went over the summer, I had some work done. <laughs> I'm like, Seamus, what did you have done? Can you tell me? Because you've been looking good. That's, the, that's where his mind goes. That's, that's where he's... You are thinking stretches, yes. more that kind of crap. You mentioned yeah, a tough season, and I mean, that's like the underestimation of the century in some ways when you think about Everton narrowly avoiding relegation. How can this year be better for you, do you think? I think we've got to learn a lot from last year. Like you touched on, yeah, probably an under statement it was a it was a, a, a definitely a, a very very hard season for us all for everyone associated with Everton Football Club and um, you know the size of the football club uh, what it means to the people of of Liverpool and um, it wouldn't have been expected at the start of last year that we would have been in that position but we were and we needed to find a way to get out of it and thankfully you know fans and players and staff all stuck together really came together when it got tough and we seen we seen the job out, but uh, yeah, this season we need to learn from that. Uh, you know, the manager has signed some some good players, some leaders, and uh, I think that can only help the changing room and and hopefully going forward that we can uh, make sure that we don't find ourselves in that position ever again. Absolutely. And Frank Lampard, who is the Everton manager, has been singing your praises lately. Let's remind ourselves and the viewers what he actually said. Check this out. This fella is uh, to say in front of everyone that one of the, be the best people I've ever met can, as a man, as a man of what you are, and as a death player. I'm laughing, he actually drives up, get up here, you. <laughs> What's it like getting that recognition from a footballing god? Even I know Frank mm. Lampard. Mm. But that's incredible. How did that feel? And even just hearing that and watching that back, Seamus? No, listen, it was nice. It was very nice. Um, I think it shows the class of the man as well to recognise maybe, you know, what fans don't see. Um, you know, they see 90 minutes on a Saturday, but I don't think they realise what goes on behind the scenes and how difficult last season actually was for us all. So to get that recognition from him, you know, was nice. Nice for my parents to see it back home as well. And, um, you know, it was a nice moment. And as I said, uh, he's a good man and uh, it was always nice to get some credit from someone like that. Your first love was GAA, right? Yeah, it was. Um, come from a big uh, GAA town and... Um, I played I played Gaelic football till I was about 18, and then um, I had a decision to make then between Gaelic and soccer. Would I, you know, stay at Gaelic, something that I was very good at, something that I knew I was good at, or would I, you know, go chase a dream of of you know being a professional footballer? So I thought, you know, I can't pass up that opportunity. I need to go for it. I need was to it ever a difficult it. choice choosing between the two at any point in your career? Oh yeah, very difficult. I think looking back now. You know, you kind of forget about them times, but uh, I do. You know, when I when I think back, it was it was tough because, um, as I said, it's a big Gaelic community, it's a big Gaelic town, and you know, I was you know a, a decent Gaelic footballer, so it was a big loss to whoever I left. So, it was a very very tough choice, not one that you know I easily made, but you know, when you get an opportunity like I did to 
to go professional at 17 it's like we're over it was a dream it was an opportunity to kick on to the bigger dream and uh, i had to make that i had to make that choice but it was very very tough for sure of course yeah you mentioned coming from you know a ga background and a ga family desi farrell the dublin senior manager is your cousin <laughs> were there ever any awkward conversations there you know where he'd be kind of pulling at your arm at christmas being like Ari, you'll come back though won't you or you know maybe would you stick with it no, I listen, Desi. Desi was a a big hero of ours growing up. Uh, you know, he would um, he'd come home from Dublin games, and we'd be out playing and in the housing estate where I'm from, and you'd be so proud that he was your cousin. And uh, you know, we're all as a family all very proud to be associated with him, a good man and uh, a very good Gaelic footballer. And now, you know, the Dublin manager, but you know, he never would have put any pressure or anything like that on me. You know, we he let me make my decisions and um you know he's very supportive to this day like I am to him. So um yeah, very big Gaelic football family and you know Desi was was a star for sure. You are the current captain of the Irish team. You made your debut in 2011. It's most people's dream to represent their country. What was it like the day you got the call saying you're in, you got the job? Uh yeah, listen it was uh, I still remember it. I was Traveling with the with the Everton team back from a game we we had Birmingham City away and I just got a phone call from would have been a secretary or something at the time to say you've been called up for the national team and just texting the family texting my girlfriend who is now my wife at the at the time and texting my brothers and just letting them know that I got called up and so much pride and so much effort and work was into it all them journeys that my dad done taking me over and back to to football training and things like that all kind of you know, came to the fore and was worth worth it, worthwhile in the end. So very proud, very proud day for me and all my family. But even to this day, when I put on the shirt, you know, I've played for Ireland quite a few times now, but still feels the same every time I put that green shirt around my neck to, to, to put on and walk out of the Viva. It's a special feeling. It must just never get imagine. old, even looking at it now. I am hearing just... all those voices, the national anthem, everything, yeah, it's just amazing. just that feeling overcoming you, transforming yeah. you. Uh, you've been captaining the team since Robbie Keane retired in 2016, and it's fair to say this squad has undergone huge transform transformation since Stephen Kenny took over in 2020. How happy are you with the developments he's made? Yeah, he's um, obviously a lot, a lot has changed, and we've had, you know, some very good results. We've had some results not so good, but I think he's capped so many new players and there's so many players, you know, starting to shine because of that. You know, I think it takes some time to settle in at international level. Um, but now we've got lads that have broken a couple of years ago who've got 10, 15, 20 caps for their country. And, you know, off the top of my head, Josh Cullen, for an example, has really stepped up to the plate and, you know, playing really, really well for Ireland. And I think that's all down to the manager bed and these players and, and giving them opportunities. And, you know, we're all looking forward to meeting up now again in September. And ultimately you want to be at major tournaments because the fans, they love it more than anything. And we've got the best support in the world. And when we were in France in 2016, that, that's where your memories are made. So ultimately the goal now for the manager and all this playing staff is to is to get there again. So that's the ambition and, and we have full belief that can happen. And Seamus, you're equally as busy off the pitch. You're a father of three, Blake, Ellie and Lily. We have to ask you, will any of them be following in their father's footsteps? Yeah, listen, uh, again, um, as long as uh, I said it a few times before about my kids, as long as they're happy and healthy, that's the main thing. And whatever they want to do sport wise, we'll, we'll back them and, 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 and push them in the right direction. And, and for me, like a touch on as long as they're happy and at the minute actually I'm I'm doing a lot of interviews and promoting you know spar better choices for for um you know healthy eating and healthy healthy living and uh you know I don't really put my name to to many things but for me I think it's a it's a great uh, campaign that they're doing I think it's so important that we as adults are healthy and give a you know a good example to our children and uh like I touched on you know you're getting them to camps and after school you're taking them places and uh, you're getting them changed in the back of the car so they, they offer you know plenty options on the go and healthy options so um, again like as long as they're happy and healthy and, and they're eating well that's that's all I want from, from the kids Absolutely. I, I think we've just seen a pic of you were you juggling in that pic Seamus can you also juggle 
<laughs> no, most certainly can't. You can see there's only two. If they added oh. another one, they would have been on the ground. So definitely not. I just threw Listen, them up in the air. Seamus, you can't be good at everything. You know what I mean? I'm glad you've left some talent for the rest <laughs> of us. They should have airbrushed a third one in. <laughs> Seamus, we could talk yeah. to you all evening. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to speak to you soon. Thank you, Seamus. Thanks, Thanks Seamus. Best Thanks luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, lovely to speak to you both. Thank you.